Live from the BDN Studios, it's Bang and Dang. That's awesome. If you don't like that, then you ain't black. Welcome back to Outlaws, Gunslingers, Hell's Angels edition with your host Bang and Dang. Second Tuesday of the month. Which means we're back at some more Hell's Angels. And boy, do we got some Hell's Angels for you today because we're profiling all profiling. the notable crimes that they've committed in just the state of California. This is just the state of California. And there is a lot. And we still got crimes from the United States, Australia, Canada, United Kingdom, and then the rest of the world. Oh, geez. These guys are criminals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Criminal. Actually, some pretty crazy. Uh, you thought mafia was like crazy. These guys are just crazy, dude. All right, for real. Before we get into it, go check out our YouTube channel at Bang Dang Network, where we post these shows, <laughs> these right. these shows, podcasts, these plus uh, shorts, clips. You know, YouTube stuff. Also, if you guys are into our dart stuff, and if you've watched our dart stuff on our YouTube, we've moved all that over to another channel, which is called the Liquor Shelf Lounge Dart League, so just search that, or I'll leave the link in the description, that's where all our dart stuff's going to be um, uploaded from here on out, because really flooding the old timeline of this channel, YouTube channel, with darts, yes, it is. and that's not what it's for, so if you guys like our dart stuff, go follow the other channel, if not... And keep it right here. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple, give us a review. Listen or uh, yeah, listen, especially, but uh, share us with friends. Answer that Spotify question. Let's go. Some crimes in California. These guys. We all know there's a lot of that happening. A lot. Not even just the Hell's Angels. Well, as we know, there are more Hell's Angels chapters in California than any other state, with over 300 members in state. The Hell's Angels are the most significant motorcycle gang in California in terms of membership and criminal activity, clearly. Right. The club has a significant role in the manufacture and distribu- dis- distribution of methamphetamine and in others, <laughs> right. other illegal enterprises. The West Coast faction of the Hells Angels was also, uh, they've been especially active in the, inf- in the infiltration of legitimate businesses, including motorcycle and automobile services, catering operations, <laughs> a bunch of bikers catering, All right. uh, bars, restaurants, and antique stores. Damn, look at these guys. Additionally, they have been, uh, the California Hells Angels been a Associated with criminal ventures with the Aryan Brotherhood, the Mexican Mafia, and the Nazi Lowriders. Damn. The Nazi Lowriders. Huh? Oh, what the fuck? It's a group of like Mexican Nazi- Nazis? Neo Nazi white supremacists in Southern California, allied with the Aryan Brotherhood and the Mexican. But what the fuck? How do you be a white supremacist group but be allied with the Mexican Mafia? Right. It's no sense to me. Well, whatever. Oh, yeah. So they got a little bit of business with all these guys. Plus, they also got some disputes with the Aryan Brotherhood, which we'll see coming up. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. A 1990 review by the California Department of Justice determined that 215 members of 14 Hells Angel chapters in that very state had been arrested on average of 10.4 times each. Oh, geez. A total of 2,202 charges, most commonly narcotics violations, assault, weapons violations, burglary, and robbery. Oh, so you know the huge. Defenders' crimes generally escalated after they gained membership of the club. Oh, did they, though? Makes sense. Shortly after the foundation of the Hells Angels North Sacramento chapter in 1956, 12 club members were arrested at a house party in Sacramento's Ben Alley neighborhood. After being elected sheriff of Sacramento County in 1961 of January, John Misterly. Oh, Mr. Misterly. Mr. Misterly. Mr. Misterly. Mr. Misterly. 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 You know that Mr. Misterly lady? I think I just killed her. John Misterly began a campaign of surveillance and purported harassment against the Hells Angels. Look at this. Sacramento's like, you know what? We're not going to stand for this shit. Oh, 1964, one Hells Angel, Ernest Canada, or Canada, two ends, appeared before the Sacramento City Council and read a letter protesting alleged li- illegal tactics against the club by sheriff's deputies. During this period, Hells Angels members would reportedly remove their colors before entering Sacramento County due to Mr. Lee's hostility towards the club. Uh-huh. In the spring of 1965, James Mother Miles, who was the founding president of the Sacramento Hells Angels, disbanded the chapter and relocated it to Richmond, where its members joined forces with Hells Angels from the San Francisco Bay Area to form a Nomads chapter. Oh, fantastic. Well, look at that shit. Wait, is this Richmond, Virginia? It's gotta be if it's Nomads. Right? California. Richmond, California. Well, okay. Fantastic. Mr. Lee, he took credit for ousting the Angels from the county and denied that his deputies were guilty of harassing the bikers. Mr. Lee's supporters told the Sacramento Bee that his harassment techniques were instrumental in the breakup of the Hells Angels, however. 
something uh, going against what Mr. Lee just said. He's like, uh, they weren't harassing nobody. Well, that's fine. Uh, apparently, his supporters, and that's all that matters. They're the ones that elect him. So. Well, Mr. Lee allowed the Hells Angels to return to Sacramento as part of a one-day truce to attend a funeral of Miles. Oh, uh-huh. He was murdered in a motorcycle accident. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. You know, the road took him out. <laughs> right. He was killed in a motorcycle accident in Berkeley on the 9th of January, 1966. Mm. Up to 300 Hells Angels from the 11 club chapters throughout California were present at Miles' funeral before they were given a police escort out of the city. Now you get the hell out of oh, here. shit. The Sacramento chapter was reestablished in 1973. My guess is Mr. Mr. is gone by then. <laughs> uh, January 29, 1963, we'll go back to the Hells Angels' Oakland headquarters was raided by the Popos. Uh-oh. And seven club members were charged with the alleged gang rape of a 29-year-old woman, oh, which shit. took place January 27th. Other charges included Hitlerism. Okay, that's a charge, huh? Marijuana possession and theft. Hitlerism, huh? A swastika flag and a picture of Adolf Hitler with the inscription, Hitler is alive, our buddy. Also found on the premises. No shit. Wow. Wasn't the Argentinians over there? All right. Five people were charged with inciting a riot and one with the illegal possession of a weapon after the Tulare County Sheriff's Department, the California Highway Patrol, and local police dispersed approximately 200 members of seven clubs from across California, including the Hells Angels and the Galloping Goose, oh. who converged in Porterville on August 31st and September 1st, 1963. No shit. Oh, come on. They went and broke up it for no reason. Damn. Among numerous incidents of violence, a group of bikers allegedly stormed Sierra View District Hospital in an attempt to continue a fight with uh, G.E. Montgomery, who was a resident of the city who was receiving medical treatment after earlier being beaten at a local tavern. Jeez, Holy shit. Jesus, drunk as fuck. 48, right. Right. We ain't done with him now. Damn. 48 Hells Angels members and their girlfriends were arrested at their clubhouse on San Francisco's Folsom Street on the 5th of December, 1964. They had charges of robbery, assault with a deadly weapon, possession of marriage, Awana, contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Uh, three of the girls were alleged to be underage. Uh, what else did they do with them? Eight in suspected felons. Uh, alleged rape of a 25-year-old woman who claimed she was assaulted on the premises the day before. How do you aid suspected felons? Either they're felons or not. Right. Get the hell out of here. And allege that the girls were underage. Uh, well, I'm sure they confirmed that. <laughs> right. Uh, the raid also pertained to a robbery in a nearby alley of a man who was allegedly knocked unconscious and dis- dispossessed of his wallet. And these guys are just some uh, freaking... Uh, there's a young gun members, probably. Right. Uh, a group of Hells Angels members, as well as some of their girlfriends, were charged in connection with a fight in which broke out during a birthday celebration at a cafe in San Fran, September of 65. The violence there allegedly erupted when the bikers attacked two police officers who arrived at the establishment. They were just going to get some uh, <clears throat> coffees or something and some bagels. Right. And the Hells Angels were like, fuck you, bro. Right. Son of a bitch. Jeez. 16 Hells Angel members attacked anti-Vietnam We're just wars. rattling it off just... <laughs> right. it's just... Holy shit. 16 Hells Angels members attacked an anti... Attacked anti-Vietnam war demonstrators at a Vietnam Day committee protest. Uh, there was a march in Berkeley on the 16th of October, 1965. Resulting in six Hells Angels being arrested, one capo. A mafia? And one police officer suffering a broken leg. Oh, oh damn. Shit. Oh, wait, we already I think we went over this. Uh, uh, the incident led to a collection of students, left wing political groups, and labor unions led by Allen Ginsberg and Jerry Rubin, meeting with a group of motorcycle club representatives headed by the president of Sacramento Hells Angels Club. Uh, in the cafeteria Jose San <laughs> <laughs> College State. Right. In the cafeteria San Jose State College, they wanted to seek assurance that a planned protest march in Oakland on November 20th would be, go undisturbed. I think we did that. Yeah, well, I mean, it was in the history of Hells Angels. Some of this stuff will repeat, obviously. Uh, November 19th, five Hells Angels members led by the club's reputed national leader, Sonny Barger, they held a press conference at their bail bondsman's office announcing that the club would not attend the protest the following day mm-hmm. as, quote-unquote, any physical encounter would only produce sympathy for the mob of traitors. Exactly. That's what Barger says. He went on to read out a telegram sent to President Lyndon B. Johnson, reading, I volunteer a group of loyal Americans for behind-the-line duty in Vietnam. We feel that a crack group of trained guerrillas could demoralize the Viet Cong and advance the cause of freedoms. Yeah, right. Not over there, buddy. President Johnson did not reply. He's like, what the hell is this? If I didn't even see it. It's a new number. Who this? Right. Eight Hells Angels were arrested when a fight broke out in a daily city tavern on April 15, 1966. Tax day. They were pissed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the funeral of San Francisco, uh, Hells Angel member uh, Larry Dean Lucas. He died in a motorcycle. Damn. 
died in a motorcycle accident near Santa Maria on 9th of April. Damn, one was in Santa Monica, the other one Santa Maria? Damn. Where's the Pinta? Right. <laughs> Santa Pinta? Right. right. Uh, for at least five years, beginning in 1967, the Oakland chapter of the Hells Angels turned over weapons acquired um, on the black market or, or locations of weapons, which could otherwise be used by Black Panther Party and weather underground radicals. They're like, hey, yo, Popos, we can get you this. And Only ex- if. Yeah, you release some of my buddies. And they're like, okay. They did, too. I mean, how does that not consider Sonny Barger a little snitch fucking <clears throat> handed in guns? Informant and shit. Right. For the, who is. knows what else they was giving him? You know it. There's theories out there that he was a mm. informant. Yeah, I bet he was. Uh, Oakland Police Department Sergeant Edward Tidd Hilliard testified in 72 that he accepted guns, dynamite, and grenades from the club's president, Sonny Barger, in return for deals on arrest during at least... 15 separate meetings he did this, the most Damn. recent of which came in uh, spring of 71. Hilliard also <laughs> Hilliard also testified that Barger had offered to deliver the bag body of a leftist for every angel released from jail. Jeez. Oh, wow. He denied, however, sure he did, that authorities permitted crimes committed by the Hells Angels. Well, yeah, you know yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Def- especially in... Uh, uh, you do this for me, you give right. up this fucking guy, we'll turn our heads on, you know, you beat up fucking Jerry in the bar, we don't, we're not going to come do nothing. All right. It was the 70s, man. There right. A lot of shit going on. Hells Angels member Charles Crazy Chuck Force. Forsyth. 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 He was arrested in possession of marijuana on the 16th of February, 1967. And the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department was subsequently granted a warrant by the Ontario Mun- Municipal Court. Uh, the judge was Richard Garner. He said, go ahead and search the Gray Ranch at, in Alta Loma, which serves at the headquarters of the club San Bernardino chapter. As deputies had probable cause to suspect the ranch contained more marriage. Nah, uh, did they? The Gray Ranch was rented by the Hells Angels from a landlord named W.H. LeBand of West Covina. All right. Did they look into W.H. LeBand? Right. February 18th, 67, 13 Hells Angels members, including Burdu, who was chapter president. What? Oh, Bernardino. Burdu chapter, they call it. Oh. Uh, president Otto Friedley, who they, is actually the actual mem- founder of the whole club itself. And eight women were arrested on drug and weapons possession charges when 27 officers of the Sheriff's Department, Vice Squad, and Special Enforcement Units, plus the Highway PD, (laughs) Highway Patrol, they raided the ranch. Oh, jeez. Damn. Four boys aged three to six who were the children of the Hells Angels members were sent to juvie. What? Oh, wow. Three to six? They went to juvenile hall? Damn. What the fuck? That's crazy. The arrests were largely uneventful, although one Hells Angels, David Friedley, had to be restrained when he attacked a ph- photographer from the Sun Telegram. Dude, there's way more stuff going on with the with these guys in the mafia right now. <laughs> oh man, and the mob's probably like cool. Well, I don't know. Mob's doing pretty shady shit in the sixties too. Right. Quantities of marijuana and other drugs, an arsenal of twenty-one firearms, including semi-auto rifles and pistols, also ammunition, several switchblade knives. Uh, no, no, no. Nazi paraphernalia, or motorcycles, signalia. motorcycle parts. <laughs> they were, these were all seized in the raid. Oh, shit, where's uh, Dom? Right. 20th of March, 1967. You don't get it. Four of the accused were released due to the lack of evidence. Dennis L. Thomas and David Lee Baumgartner, they pled guilty to possession of marijuana on the 27th of November, 1967. Due to the publicity the raid received, four senior members of the San Bernardino chapter were granted a change of venue to stand trial. They're like, we can't do that here. There he is, going to that next venue. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go to court, baby. <laughs> Their cases were moved to Santa Ana in Orange County. All right, well, meanwhile, Friedley was convicted of maintaining a place for the unlawful use of marijuana and unlawful possession of a firearm by a former felon. Oh, shit. February 12th, but Barger didn't get charged with that when they found one on his in his house? Mm. Uh, all because the chick was like, it's mine. Right. February 29, 1968, two other Hells Angels, Theodore Moses Medina and Ralph D. Ladd, were found guilty of marijuana. Oh. The Hells Angels subsequently abandoned the Gray Ranch. I would, too. Right. Let's take a look at some sex crimes engaged Uh-oh. by these guys. A lot of rapes, I bet. Approximately 300 Hells Angels descended on Monterey during Labor Day weekend 1964 for the purpose of raising funds amongst themselves to transport the body of a former member who was killed in an accident back oh. to his mother in North Carolina. Oh, shit. On the 6th of September, 1964. Two girls, age 14, 15, allegedly taken from their dates and gang raped by the Hells Angels. Oh, jeez. Four Hells Angels were jailed for rape, although the charges were dismissed on the 25th of uh, September due to insufficient evidence. 
The club was also banned from the city. No more coming back to Monterey, guys. The incident prompted an investigation into Hells Angels and other motorcycle gangs by the Attorney General of California. Oh, shit. Uh-huh. The Lynch Report is what this was called, compiled over a six-month period and released March 15, 1965. Detailed various alleged crimes committed by the club, such as assault, robbery, forgery, car theft, and trafficking in narcotics. Oh. Fast forward three years. In April 68, almost the entire membership of the Hells Angels San Diego chapter were indicted on the charges of kidnapping, assault, false imprisonment, robbery, and rape. Damn. Charges related to an incident in which a 28-year-old woman was abducted from a San Diego bar, taken to a nearby residence where she was beaten, raped, tortured by several Hells Angels members and their girlfriends. (laughs) Jeez, what the fuck are these guys doing? Get a hold on your guys. All right, what the... F- man, all hopped up on meth and shit. The mafia would never stand for that shit. Dude. They'd, right. they'd be killing these guys. I mean, bikers are savages, man. Fucking causing too much attention. Savages, these guys were. Crazy. A woman was allegedly gang raped by four members of the San Diego chapter on a 20, 27th July. These San Diegans, July. man. Right. And that was in 1969, 27th July. After filing charges against the four, she was subjected to threats and intimidated and to leave in the San Diego area. She refused to testify in court for fear of reprisal. Mm, Jeez. She's like, these motherfuckers are going to kill me. They could put you in uh, protection. With sec. Right. I'm like, no. Members of the San Bernardino Hells Angels, along with bikers from the Glendale chapter of the Mongols, the Straight Satans of Venice, and Glendale Knight Riders, they committed a sexual assault on a 15-year-old girl in August 1972. Damn, the whole freaking... Jeez. The whole community, huh? Damn. April 5th, 1973, Hells Angel member John Fisher... Glenn Little, John Stratton, and David Wynn, and also Thomas Neely were among 11 motorcycle gang members convicted in L.A. of rape and sex perversion. Jeez, dude. Man, these guys are just some freaking scoundrels. Oh, but wait, there's more. A woman alleged that she was beaten and assaulted with a rubber dildo by two Uh, San Diego Hells Angels members, uh, uh, (laughs) their girlfriends, not the members, and that she was forced to orally copulate or copulate a Hells Angels and a German Shepherd dog after she accepted a ride home from a biker funeral with a group in 75. Dude, she she had to suck a dog's dick. Uh, What uh, the fuck? uh, the charges were dismissed as law enforcers were unable to locate the woman after she filed a criminal. Oh, I bet. Oh, jeez. Well, fast forward to March 1977. A woman was allegedly stripped of her clothing, beaten, and forced to ingest LSD by the Hells Angels members and their girlfriends at the residence of the club's San Diego chapter president. Damn. She had been accompanied to the residence under the pretense of adding or attending a party after meeting a Hells Angel at an ocean beach bar earlier that night. Oh. <clears throat> More of the story, ladies. You meet a biker, don't go back right. to any places with him. Son of a bitch. You know, why is it always with their girlfriends, too? Because girlfriends are probably jealous. Right. And fucking, yeah. Sorry, them ones egging it on. Right. Holy shit. According They're to old D- ladies. Right. According to the DEA, Hells Angels began large scale drug distribution during mid 1967. Soon became the lead manufacturer and distributor of LSD in California. At this very time, the Hells Angels became involved in a drug war with the Gypsy Jokers in the San Francisco Bay Area. The clubs reached an accord that very year. The Jokers left California for Oregon. Damn. <laughs> Gone. And the Angels agreed to stay out of well, Oregon. Well, you just go up to Oregon. Right. Untapped potential up there. You have the whole state to yourself. We don't give a fuck about up there anyways. Right. California Department of Justice estimated the Hells Angels distributed approximately $31 million in narcotics between 1969 and 1972. Damn. That's not a lot. That's a lot in 1969. I guess. Well, meanwhile, 33 members of the Oakland Hells Angels chapter, including Sonny Barger and four of their girlfriends, were arrested on drug charges after the police raided a bar and duplex apartment in the city August 30th. $7,000 worth of heroin, $2,500 worth of other narcotics were confiscated, as were firearms which included an M16 rifle, two shotguns, and an M1 carbine. Damn. Carbine. Carbine. Bean. And a large cache of ammunition, knives, chains, and suspected these motherfuckers were uh, trying out for the um, um, Road Rage video game. Right. Beating each other with chains and chains. Right. <laughs> well, it was called Road Rage, wasn't it? Yeah, of course it was. Uh, the raids were the result of a three-week investigation. Holy That's actually shit. a pretty short investigation. They were right. probably like, wow, look at these idiots doing all this shit right. all in the open. Why did it take three weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, Hell's Angels Oakland Chapler. Chapler? Chapler Chapler? <laughs> the Angels Oakland Chapter President and National Leader Sonny Bodger. Allegedly. Arrested narcotic charges after Donald Holworth, a film studio property manager, and in 1967 Mr. America from Studio City. He was apprehended while walking towards Barger's Oakland home. I remember this with the fucking suitcase. He had 17 ounces of cocaine. 32 ounces of heroin. Jeez. Estimated retail worth $350,000. He had that in a suitcase on the 11th of April, 1970. 
Barger. He temporarily resigned as president of the Oakland chapter, as we all know, in June of 1970 to fight these charges. But returned to position within months after his successor, John Johnny Angel Polomar. Well, he went to jail himself for 10 years, shooting a bartender. Can you believe that? (laughs) <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the drug charges against Barger were later dismissed, although Holworth was convicted and sentenced to serve five years of life. He probably did seven. <laughs> Palomar, while deputizing as president of the Oakland chapter on behalf of Barger, was charged with narcotics and weapons violations after a raid on his home uh, by a police drug squad uncovered small quantities of drugs and small arsenal of firearms June 25th, 1970. Charges were later dismissed, although he was sentenced to 10 years in prison right after uh, shooting that bartender. So, jeez, dude, stay out of trouble. Right. Fucking These insane. are the presidents and shit. The big guys. Come on. Wow. Unorganized. Sonny Barger, Sergey Walton, Donald Dwayne Whitey Smith. Sergey? Sergey? Sergey. <laughs> <laughs> Sergey Walton, Donald Dwayne Whitey Smith, and Oakland Gary Benjamin Popkin. They were charged with the May 21st, 1972 murder of Servio Winston Argero. Aguero, Aguero. Servio Winston Aguero. He was a drug trafficker from McAllen, Texas. He traveled to Oakland with a consignment of narcotics for sale, which was allegedly occurred following a dispute over an $80,000 cocaine deal. Prosecution witness Richard Ivaldi, he testified that he witnessed Barger shoot Aguero dead as he slept at the home of an absent acquaintance, and that Barger subsequently ordered the others to set fire to the place. There was no fire trucks or nobody found a body right. afterwards. Got to be some kind of a uh, pip trail to this. Right. Uh, the four defendants were acquitted December 29, 1972, following a seven-week trial after Ivaldi's credibility came under scrutiny. He's a criminal. According to Barger's chief attorney, James Crew, Evaldi himself was involved in the conspiracy to kill Aguero and known he was a prime suspect in fear and retaliation from the Texas Mafia. Oh, sure. I'm assuming that's where Aguero's from. Right. He tried to shift the blame to the Hells Angels. The killing of Aguero was one of the five possibly linked murders committed in the area around that time. The others, three men, drug dealers Kelly Patrick Smith, Willard Thomas, and Gary Kemp, which was an acquaintance of Evaldi, uh, were found shot to death in a house near San Leonardo, Leandro, the day after Aguero's murder, and the body of a woman, Karen Long, was discovered in the trunk of a car in Oakland, May 26th. Damn, dude, they took out all his acquaintances, Holy huh? Holy shit. Damn, informant. Was it really? Was it the Texas Mafia that did that? Well, you maybe, think? Maybe. It's very possible. Wow. An informant led investigating detectives to the location of the automobile in which Long's corpse was found in that very trunk, just dead. John Joseph Devaney, Long's former husband, Long's a girl. Right. Uh, was found dead in a car in, in Hayward on the 14th of June in an apparent suicide by carbon monoxide. Oh, I'm sure. Barger sentenced to a prison a term of 10 years to life on the 16th of March in 1973 after he was convicted of possession of narcotics for sale. 37 grams of heroin. Woo. And he also had uh, a weapon, which he's a convicted felon, and he not allowed that, Barger. His girlfriend, Sharon Grook, Grook What's co defendant? Her case ended in a mistrial when a jury failed to reach a verdict. And we got who we wanted. All right. According to police intelligence reports, Barger had designated San Jose chapter President Phil Moore <laughs> Cross as his international successor during a motorcycle run at Bass Lake prior to his imprisonment. Fantastic. Cross was also in prison, though, for possession of amphetamine in 1975. And then Barger allegedly continued to lead after that from his cell in Folsom. I wonder if he was there for the concert. What year was that? I don't know. Uh, Barger was paroled November 3rd, 1977, after serving four and a half. Look at that. Did four and a half good behavior. Get the hell out of there. Mm -mm. Drug dealer Gail Elmer English and Vallejo, Hells Angels chapter president John Henderson, were murdered. Oh, shit. And another Hells Angel, Ted DeWild, was left in critical condition as a result of a gun battle at English's uh, Vallejo... At English's Vallejo home on November 1st, 1973. English, he was allegedly murdered on the orders of senior San Francisco Bay Area Hells Angels member Kenneth J. K. O. Owen. Oh, shit. For introducing and for intruding on Owen's narcotics franchise. You can't do that. Now they're going to eat each other here. Damn, Kevin Owens, huh? Oh, Kenneth Owens. Right. Uh, Hells Angel associate Henry Crabtree was extradited from Arkansas, where he was charged with the 18th of October, 1979, murder of Michael Birch. Which happened in November '79. Wow! Wait, he was extradited 
in November of 79 for the October murder of Michael Birch. Right. Right. Uh, and he went, they did that to testify for the government against East Bay Nine Clubs. <laughs> Against nine East Bay club members and associates implicated in the bikers and drug dealing, which took place between 68 and 77. Oh, wow. Crabtree, who had grossed $100,000 per month from selling meth, had obtained from selling meth he had obtained from Hells Angels members, withdrew from the club's milieu, milieu? from the club's membership in August of 77 and began cooperating with authorities in January 78. Ooh. After learning that Oakland chapter enforcer James Brandes had put out a $10,000 contract on his life. Because they believed he turned informant. Guess what? They're they right. They were correct. This dude's dead if he shows his face anywhere. Right. That's the crazy shit, man. You got to go to Oregon. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Members of the Aryan Brotherhood attempted to shoot Crabtree. Also interrogate his friends in an effort to collect the bounty. They wanted a 10 grand. I bet they did more than interrogate his friends. Right. Crab Aryan Brotherhood is some assholes. Crabtree testified in front of grand jury that he and two Hells Angels, Kenneth Owen and Sergey Walton, the Oakland chapter president, they stole bottles of phenyl to propano. P2P. That's to make meth. Oh, wow. They also stole enough glassware to build five meth labs during a heist at a local chemical company in January of 1977. Jeez. Look at these guys. Well, Douglas Chester Schultz, president of the San Diego Hells Angels, was arrested October 31st, 1985. He was indicted on 18 counts of possession of meth, intent to distribute, and conspiracy. Oh, wow. Two employees of Schultz's limousine service, Gerald Robert Ladley and Thomas Longnecker, <laughs> <laughs> were also charged with distributing meth from the business. Oh, no shit. Yeah, you know, going around the city in the limos, dropping it off and stuff. Yeah. April 8, 1986, Schultz and three others were charged with the February 86 assault of William Eugene Barr, a federal informant in the case. You think he had, had a full-size moonroof for his limo? Thomas Longnecker. There's <laughs> <laughs> a dome. Stickers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Convertible limo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, Schultz sentenced five years in prison for conspiracy to distribute meth and using a telephone to facilitate a drug transaction on yeah. the 30th of June, 1986. Damn, you know what? That's illegal. <laughs> Use a telephone? Jeez, That's fucked dude. up. I was just supposed to do it. Oh, wow. He was one, one of four members voted out of the San Diego chapter. During the fall of that very year. Oh, now they're getting the census here. The club later reinstated. Oh, though, geez, never mind. <laughs> as they had unknowingly violated their national charter by expelling an incarcerated member. All right, oh. you can't do it until they get out. Right. I guess. San Diego Hells Don't Angels like chapter hell. president <laughs> Gary Russell Castiglione and his boyfriend Kathleen Rebecca Pirelli. Well, they were indicted two, on charges. Right. They were indicted on charges of conspiracy to possess two pounds of meth. How do you conspire to, to possess two pounds? Right. With Either the, you got it or you don't. I mean, come on, guys. Right. With intent to distribute after drugs were found in Pirelli's purse during a search by so the United she, States it's not border. Conspiracy to possess. Wow, the border patrol got these. That's a big ass purse. Oh, they tried getting them in uh, at the checkpoint in Temacula on the thirteenth of nineteen eighty nine. <laughs> Temecula. <laughs> Temecula? Temecula. Oh, uh, they did that yeah, at the border of Temecula checkpoint on May 13th. Why are you going to the fucking border checkpoint? Idiots. <laughs> With drugs. Idiots. Uh, Cast- they won't check your purse. Right. right. They won't. Well, Castiglione, I think, right, pled guilty to charges December 20th, 1989, while Pirelli pleaded guilty to using a telephone to facilitate a drug act. Oh, act- shit. Transaction. That's bullshit. <laughs> March 5th, 1990. How come they don't do that now with cell phones and shit? Right. Maybe they do. Well, right. Well, March 5th, 1990, Castiglione uh, was sentenced to five years in federal prison. Oh, he's good. And fined 100 grand, and Pirelli was sentenced to two. Oh, they both be out, and she'll be out in like oh, eight right. months. Right. He'll be out in a year and a half. Elsewhere, 13 members of the Hades Riders oh. Motorcycle Club in Fresno were arrested in July 89 on narcotics and weapons violations charges. Oh, you idiots. As part of that investigation, authorities seized a meth lab along with various amounts of meth, I would assume, <sighs> marijuana and cocaine, as well as 40 weapons, including several assault rifles. Plus, they had evidence showing a conspiracy involving the Hades Riders and the Monterey Hells Angels chapter to distribute meth. Obviously. Yeah. Well, obviously, you, met, you think Hells Angels are going to let these guys uh, cook on their... Turf right now. Holy shit. This is insane. Dude, it's just, just stupidity. Literally rapid fire crime. <laughs> Constant. And we're not even a quarter way through the episode. And the shitty part is these guys, most of these guys are just nobodies. Right. Wow. Oh, we had a couple of club presidents in here. Otis Garrett, what they call Buck. He was president of the Hells Angels Vallejo based Nomads chapter. And several of his associates were indicted in late 1989 and early 1990 on various narcotic and weapon charges. 
Garrett, additionally charged with continuing criminal enterprise, money laundering, conspiracy to distribute 11 pounds of meth to the club's Winston-Salem, North Carolina chapter. Authorities believe that the Hells Angels members and associates were operating a large-scale meth dis- distribution ring. No shit. With the Klan and Stein Laboratories in San Bernardino, but... And Modoc counties. Oh, Butte, but yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, Butte, all right. Butte well, and Modoc. Oh, Garrett, shit. who oversaw what prosecutors described as the largest meth manufacturing and distribution case in the United States, made millions from distri- distributing thousands of kilos of the drug. Damn. He was convicted of various conspiracy, possession, distribution, and interstate drug trafficking charges in June of 92, sentenced to life without parole, September 28, 92. Just think of that, dude. Early 80s, they had to deal with. The mob, mostly in the East. Then they had to deal with George Young and Pablo Escobar and with the, the cocaine. And Florida and shit. In Florida and California. Well, California was the weed. Right. And then you had to deal with uh, these Hells Angels guys. Oh, it's just insane. 80s. And yeah, and then you had. And not to mention, at this time, not early 90s, that's when the street gangs are popping right. up, Blood Crips, and all those fuckers. They finally realized they can make millions off of cocaine and right. crack. Yeah, Getting crazy. the game, baby. Crazy times. Uh, former Winston-Salem chapter officer Charles Terry Norman testified against members of his former club in the case, which also resulted in the convictions of Carl Dulinski and Harris Blaine Schimmel. Mm. Come on, Charles. You're going to get killed. Jeez, oh, Pete. Garrett sentenced to an additional four consecutive life Jeez. sentences. Jeez. never getting out. Convicted on four counts of moida. In an unrelated case on the July 26, 1995. Damn. That's when he was convicted. Right. On an unrelated case. Well, obviously. Wow. They, they were like, what else can we dig right. up on this fucking guy? What these murders? <laughs> sure. <laughs> he died at uh, FCI Lompoc, age, must be a... Uh, a prison. Right. Correctional Institute of Florida. Is he in Florida? Or a hospital. Florida Correctional, yeah. yeah. Uh, age 74 on the 12th of February, 2017. Damn, he was in there for... Wild. Nine members and associates with San Diego Hells Angels chapter indicted on narcotic and weapons violation charges in December 1990. Bikers allegedly manufactured and distributed meth between Jamul, Indio, and Las Vegas, Nevada. The DEA, along with the state and local enforcements, began investigating the Hells Angels San Jose and Grass Valley, uh, California nomads chapters. As a result of intelligence suggesting the Hells Angels was manufacturing and transporting meth, obviously, to Savannah. Damn, Savannah, Georgia. Going everywhere, Holy man. shit. Well, the San Jose and Nomad. You know what? By now, they can just suspect that every single chapter is doing the right. exact same thing. You would think. Well, the San Jose and the Nomads chapter clubhouses were raided with authority season weapons, of course. 80 pounds of ephedrine, which I'm assuming is to make meth. Three pounds of meth, $230,000 in cash. It, could, it should be called methephedronine. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Several club members and associates in California and Georgia were arrested. Hells Angel member Obadiah oh, Breer. Oh, yeah, we got a Amish guy up in this bitch, huh? <laughs> he was arrested on state charges August 15, 2018. He has to ride a bike. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, he was arrested in 2018 he when police a, SWAT team executed him. He, he's riding uh, Pee Wee Herman Swan or Schwinn. Schwinn. <laughs> Schwinn. Hey, look at that Schwinn. Look at that Schwinn. <laughs> uh... Yeah, Obadiah Brer was arrested on state charges August 15, 2018, when a police SWAT team executed a search warrant on his Escondido residence and discovered coke, meth, and pharmaceutical pills, oh, plus, plus a fire. Oh, no. Come on, Obadiah. Jeez. This is your uh, six months of uh, freedom. Right, you're the, what do they call what, it? Like uh, the journey into the wild right. or whatever the fuck? Look what you did here, bud. <laughs> Son Join of a biker bitch. gang. Fuck it, start <laughs> distributing meth. Damn. Jeez. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez! Ever seen that, that stupid, they made him grow a mustache. You ever, yeah, you ever <laughs> seen that stupid? Uh, right, they're like, dude, you need something on that top lip. <laughs> and all that beard and mustache. <laughs> you ever seen that stupid show, um, Amish Mafia? Uh, on Discovery back I in the day. Heard about Shit it. was so fucking right. retarded. Hilarious. There was a movie I did watch not too long ago where uh, four Amish left a place for their little thing. And they just fucked themselves up, dude. Fucked themselves up. Like, it was all there's like fucking several. drinking. The girl turned a stripper and there's fucking. S- oh, there's several documentaries about insanity, that. Insanity, dude. It was fucking very entertaining. <laughs> and the homage dad and mom were just like, no. Mm. The warrant was based on an incident in which Breer, he was alleged to have brandished a firearm during a traffic encounter with other motorists on 5th of August 2018. 
He also evaded police officers in subsequent chase. September 11, 2018, when Breer was out of custody on pretrial release for the early offense, the Popo conducted a traffic stop of Breer on his motorcycle and discovered that he was in possession of meth and cocaine, you stupid son of a bitch. Come on, you got your colors on, you're on your bike, why are you going to carry this shit around? Right, knowing that you're, everybody's watching you. Idiot. Wow, he was sentenced to 12 years in prison for meth distribution. For meth distribution on the 17th of June, 2019. You dumb son of a bitch. People are... That's fucking stupid. Well, we ain't done yet because uh, June 25th, 2019, Modesto Hells Angels chapter president, Randy Peachy, his wife, Tina Peachy, Michael Mize, and a club prospect, Michael Peck, were arrested and charged with conspiracy to distribute and possess with intent to distribute meth. Oh, wow. Three other members of the chapter, including the vice president and secretary, were indicted for various offenses September 19th, 2019. Wow. Vice President Michael Schaefer was charged with conspiring to distribute marijuana. Now they're getting some big guys. Conspiring to distribute heroin, heroin d- distribution of marijuana, and two counts of use of communication facility to facilitate a drug trafficking offense. Oh, shit. Jeez. And Secretary Patrick Gonzalez was charged with being a felon in possession of firearm and ammo. Oh, no. While Ricky Blackwell was charged with possession of cocaine with intent to distribute, possession of a firearm and furtherance of a drug trafficking offense. Oh, no. And possession of a firearm after suffering a misdemeanor domestic violence conviction. Holy oh, shit. Balls on Damn. ice. Beat his wife. Damn. That is insane. This is just ridiculous. Like, the whole hierarchy on that on that chapter just fucking went to hell out there. Holy shit. Well, the case was the result of a months-long investigation to the chapter by the FBI, the guru of ATF, the ATF and explosives, but it's only ATF. All right. IRS criminal investigation in two local police departments. February 8, 2021, Blackwell was sentenced to six and a half years in prison for possession with intent to distribute cocaine and possession of a firearm in furtherance of a drug trafficking offense. Fantastic. Jeez. Wow. One major event in Hell's Angels history involved <laughs> December 6, 1969. Oh, yeah. Ultimat Free Concert. At the Altamont Speedway, partially documented in 1970 film Gimme Shelter, featuring Jefferson Airplane, Flying Burrito Brothers, and the Rolling Stones. Oh, cool. I think we needed to know that. The Grateful Dead were also scheduled to perform, but canceled at the last minute, owing to ensuing circumstances at the venue. Like, we don't really want to be a part of that shit. Didn't the Grateful Dead like have issues with Hell's Angels? No. The Angels had been hired by the Rolling Stones <laughs> as a crowd security for a feet. Oh, we... Have this and it's going to go on a little bit more of it, though. Right. Uh, the Rolling Stones hired Hell's Angels for uh, a fee which was said to include $500 worth of beer. And which, probably all the women and drugs they want. Right. Uh, Angels parked their motorcycles in front of the stage in order to create a buffer between the stage and the hundreds of thousands of concert goers. Isn't there a video of this? Yeah. Crowd management proved to be difficult, resulting in both spectator injury and death. Oh, shit. Over the course of the day, the Hell's Angels became increasingly agitated as the crowd turned more aggressive. At a later murder trial of Hell's Angel Alan Pissarro, who was a security guard, oh, a security guard testified he heard the Hell's Angels being summoned over the loudspeakers when the helicopter bearing the Rolling Stones landed. Okay. <laughs> no shit, that was a shit show, I bet. Debate after the event was over whether the Hell's Angels were to manage security for the entire concert or just for the Rolling Stones. Sam Cutler, the Stones Angel who had arranged to pay the Hells Angels, said their role was to uh, bodyguard the Rolling Stones and nothing to do with their concert. Right. This was denied by the Angels as well as other connected to the uh, event. During the opening act of Santana, the Hells Angels surged into the crowd numerous times to keep persons off stage. By the time the Rolling Stones took stage, numerous incidents of violence had occurred, both between the Angels and internally within the crowd. Not the least of which featured a circus performer weighing over 350 pounds, stripping naked and running a monk amid the concert goers. Fantastic. All right. Now, audience members attempted to detain him. Eventually, the irate man was subdued after Angels intervened with fists and makeshift weapons. Oh. While a crowd of four to 5,000 looked on from the edge of the stage. I mean, the guy was 350 pounds. Right. And probably drunker than piss. And just ramming people over oh, probably like a damn man. tank. Their aggression did not subside there, though, after an Angels motorcycle was toppled. Oh, oh shit. shit. Club members' tempers continued to escalate. Their ire spread wide between the audience and performers alike. At one point, Marty Balin of Jefferson Airplane was knocked unconscious, following an altercation with an Angel, an event later depicted in the movie Gimme Shelter. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Jeez. The Grateful Dead said, uh-uh, I'm not playing following the Balin incident, and they left that venue quick. I mean, the Grateful Dead, they're like hippies. Right. A shoving match erupted near the stage during a rendition of the song, Under My Thumb. Under My Thumb. As the song began. Is that what it is? Yeah. 
as the song began. Get out of my car. No, right. that's not it. That's, that's under into my, my head. Wait, out of my head, into my, my car. That's not it. As the song began, a man in the audience, Meredith Hunter, yeah. was allegedly harassed and then violently pushed back by the angels. He returned, producing a handgun. Hunter was stabbed to death. Dude had a handgun and still got stabbed to death. Hell's Angel member Alan Pissarro was later acquitted of Moida on the grounds of self-defense. After the concert and critical media attention given to the Hell's Angels, Sonny Barger went on a local California radio station to justify the actions of the Angels and to present their side of the story. Like, hey, man, we went there to do a job and shit just got out of hand. Well, they had no security anywhere. And it was off to us. And then they fucked with our bike. He did say that the violence only started once the crowd began vandalizing the Hell's Angels motorcycles. Barger would later claim that Hunter fired a shot, which struck a Hells Angels member with what he described as just a flesh wound. 2005, after a two-year exhaustive cold case renewal of the file, the Alameda County District Attorney's Office permanently closed the case. That ain't nothing here, boy. An enhanced and slowed-down version of the original film footage were produced for the police after examining it. And after examining it, Alameda Alameda County Sheriff's Office Sergeant Scott Dudek said Pissarro who's been dead since 1985, was the only person to stab Hunter, and he did so only after the handgun was pointed at the stage where the storms were. Oh, performing. shit. Alan Pissarro was the only person who stabbed, yes, Dudek said, adding that Pissarro's lawyer confirmed his client was a sole assailant. Quote, unquote, Pissarro acted with a knife to stop Meredith Hunter from shooting. Oh, I mean, justified. Well, there we go. I don't know why you opened it back up. Probably because they're trying to get something else on right. Sonny Barger or something Jeez. at this point. Uh, year 1970, during a conflict with the X-Men motorcycle gang. San Diego Hells Angel Chapter Vice President Andrew Horn shot and murdered with a sawed-off oh, shotgun shit. by Axeman biker Rick McCart, who was acquitted of the killing and subsequently fled the area <laughs> afterwards. Did. In 1975, several Axeman members survived the bombing of their clubhouse via a remote-controlled explosive device. Mm-hmm. An Axeman member was shot dead as he rode his motorcycle the following year. According to a police informant and former Hells Angel, the murder was committed by the San Diego Hells Angels. Well, they then became involved in a dispute with the Mongols oh, after the shit. rival club began wearing a California bottom rocker, Uh-oh. which is the patch, obviously. And the Mongols had previously listed only individual chapter locations on their colors, and the Hells Angels asserted that they were the only club allowed to wear a California patch, as they were the dominant club in the state. Piss off. The Mongols objected to this, infuriating the Angels. Piss off. The Hells Angels then declared war on those Mongols at a meeting on July 7th, 1977. Jeez. Said, we're fucking coming at them. They ain't wearing that fucking California bottom patch. We own this shit. Mm, The conflict would result in the deaths of four Mongols members and an innocent 15-year-old boy. Uh Mongols member Alan Bishop was shot off his motorcycle in Kern County on 29th of July 1977. Two other members of the Mongols San Diego chapter, Raymond Jingle Smith and chapter president Emerson Redbeard Morris. They were shot with a uh, AR-15 while riding the motorcycles on Interstate 15 near, oh, look at that, 15, 15, 15, <laughs> uh, near Escondido on, 15th, <laughs> on the 5th of September 1977. Right. Well, one man died at the scene while the other died at the Palomar Medical Center. The two biker spouses who were riding on the back of their motorcycles were wounded. Morris's wife, Dolores, was left paralyzed. Oh, wow. September 9th, 1977, a van bomb was detonated at the funeral of Morris and Smith oh, and Lemon geez. Grove. You don't do that shit at a... members and the father of a member. You don't do that shit at a funeral. Everybody knows. Of course you do. These guys do. Oh, we God. already know that. Holy shit. Oh, Mongols member Harry or Henry Jimenez and Raymond Hernandez, the 15-year-old brother of another biker, were killed in an explosion after Jimenez began working on a tire rigged with a bomb at a motorcycle repair shop in oh, Highland Park. no. That was on 24th of September, 1977. Holy shit. Piss just, you can't even work on your damn bike. Right. Days later, San Fernando Valley Mongols chapter president Luis G- Gutierrez survived a car bombing outside his home. The violence led to a crackdown by law enforcement. Well, I hope so. On the 7th of October, 1977, 32,000 member Hamas. <laughs> <laughs> and the first uh, inta- intifada. <laughs> Uh, on uh, October 7, 1977, 32 members and associates of San Diego Hells Angels were arrested on various charges, including Chapter President Thomas James Crunch Renzulli, who was charged with attempted murder. Fourteen of those arrests were patch-holding members of the San Diego Chapter. Damn, so Damn. a bunch of nobodies. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, the arrest followed a 10-month investigation of the club, which involved infiltration by a police informant. Mm. Six sticks of dynamite were discovered attached to the vehicle of a San Diego Mongols member October 11, 1977. Holy shit. ATF agents matched the bomb components to the explosives given to the informant. Uh, oh. uh, the informant gave them to Renzulli on September 30th. Oh, shit. Five Hells Angels members, including gorgeous guy Russell, gorgeous guy, right. <laughs> Russell Castiglione, James Brett Eaton and Thomas James Renzulli were indicted on racketeering and conspiracy charges in September of 82. Holy shit. Also, nothing even to do with that. Damn. Dude, Justice Department is working overtime. In the 80s, it was the mob cracked down, and that was these guys. Holy shit. Right. Man, them prisons are just rough. <laughs> the indictment alleges the group were responsible for the moitus of Morris and Smith, as well as the bombing of the funeral. Another Hell's Angel, Thomas Heath, he was convicted in 1994 of two counts of second-degree moita of the killings of Hernandez and Jimenez. Jimenez. He was sentenced to seven years in prison. That's, That's it. it. Wow. The Mongols seized control of Southern California from oh, the Hell's shit. Angels and in even the 1980s. All this, they're like bitches. Right. San Diego Hell's Angels Sergeant at Arms Raymond Fat Ray Piltz. He became the Angels' first casualty in the conflict when he was shot and moitered in a biker bar in Lemon Grove on the 17th of January, 1982. Took long. That was five years after their guys were getting killed. Five Mongol members were indicted over his death, and one, Bill Michael months they call him mike obviously he was convicted of involuntary manslaughter and sentenced to six years in prison probably did three Jeez. in an attempt to end the hell's angels and mongols <laughs> war the clubs agreed to a truce in which the angels yielded southern california to the mongols wow wow under the terms of the truce the angels retained their charters in monterey orange county riverside fresno ventura san diego and san bernardino but allowed the Mongols to free reign over the rest of Southern California and gave their uh, gave the Mongols permission to wear a California rocker. Oh. The Mongols, in turn, promised not to establish any chapters in Northern California. They're like, all right, what, what's – and then and then you can get risky because what's Northern California? Right. <laughs> Where does that start? Uh, I would say Sacramento. I mean, Sacramento. I would say like – Probably uh, Sacramento. I'd say Oakland, more, right? No, Sacramento is way more north. Yeah, if I say second. After you get out of all those big right. slime infested cities, then right. where's all woods? The feud reactivated when 50 to 100 members of the rival clubs clashed at a motorcycle trade show in Long Beach on the 10th of February, 1989, resulting in San Bernardino Hells Angels Chapter Sergeant at Arms Aristio Andres uh, Carbajal, they call him Art. He was stabbed to death and several others wounded. No suspects ever arrested. Hells Angels member Christian Harvey Tate murdered. Several gunshots fired from another vehicle struck him in the back while he was riding his motorcycle on Interstate 40 near Ludlow on the 27th of April, 2002. Oh, jeez. For what reason? That had been a reason. Well, he had, been, he had been returning to San Diego after attending the Laughlin River Run motorcycle rally. Although police surmised at the time that Tate's death was connected to the River Run riot. A fatal confrontation between members of the Hells Angels and the Mongols, which occurred in Laughlin, uh, Nevada, earlier that day. The homicide was gone unsolved. Mm, okay. 17 members of the associates of the Hells Angels in San Diego County were arrested June 11, 2003, as a result of a two-year investigation into drug trafficking and racketeering. Ooh-wee. Dumbasses. The Angels Clubhouse in El Cajun was raided as part of the operation. Federal wiretaps also recorded club members planning to kill Mongol members in retaliation for the murder of Christian Tate. Ten Hells Angels members, including San Diego Chapter President Guy Russell Castellon and Sergeant at Arms Mark Allen Toyson, pled guilty to conspiracy. Oh, shit. Castellon was sentenced to six years imprisonment on September 22nd, 2005. Toyson sentenced to 14 years on July 28, 2006. The convictions effectively dismantled this very chapter in San Diego. It's over with. Adios, amigos. Well, and then there's the two-year ATF investigation of the motorcycle club that resulted in the arrest of 26 club members in the San Fernando Valley, San Francisco and Ventura County on December 3rd, 2003. And it was racketeering charges filed at the U.S. District Court for the District of Nevada and stemming from the River Run Riot as well. Mm, all right. How can you file charges... Because it's federal. And ATF's federal. You can charge them all over the place. Right. Anyways, nine Hells Angels, including the chapter president and three officers, were arre an officer home, uh, uh, were arrested in the San Fernando Valley, and another 17 were taken into custody in Northern California. Man, these guys are just... How many freaking members they got? Only 300. Wow. Shit. <laughs> well, 
now. Right. The rest were carried out as part of a five-state operation involving over 700 federal, state, and municipal law enforcement officers, which resulted in the arrest of 57 angels across the country and the seizure of approximately 125 firearms. That's it? 125 firearms, more than a 1,000 rounds of ammo, several stolen vehicles, a quarter pound of methamphetamine, three Californian uh, angels, Maurice Pete units, Raymond Folks and James Hannigan, they were among the six club members convicted of committing a violent crime in the aid of racketeering following their extradition to Las Vegas uh, to face charges. No shit. That's 13. a lot there, and they're going to get murdered with sentences. That's well, it. Right. Well, what? February 13, 2007, <laughs> Eunice was sentenced to two and a half years. Folks sentenced to 12 months, while Hannigan was sentenced to two years, February 23, 2007. Wow. Charges were dismissed against the remaining 36 defendants in the case. Fast forward to 2008, Mark Papa Guardado, the president of the San Francisco chapter, was shot dead oh. after a bar fight in the Mission, Mission District of San Francisco. No shit. Christopher Brian Ablett, a member of the rival Mongols Club, was later arrested for Guardado's murder. Oh, man. These we're gonna guys. Renew that, uh, we're going to renew it in the 2000s, huh? Holy shit. 21st of May, year 2017, Mongols member Joshua Herbert exited a car driven by another unidentified man. And open fire with a revolver on a group of five angels who are refueling their motorcycles at a shell gas station in Riverside, killing Orange County Hells Angel James Duty and an wounding Anutta. Wow. The incident followed a series of shootings and attempted moitas between the clubs over the previous eight months in Orange and Los Angeles counties. After a month long investigation by the Riverside Police Department, FBI, the ATF, and California Department of Justice, Herbert, charged with murder and firearm offenses on June 21st, 2017. Took a month to do that? Right. I'm sure there's video, uh, video cameras all over that Shell gas station. You think? Well, Oakland, <laughs> Oakland Hells Angels chapter vice president Michael O'Farrell was killed after being stabbed in the neck, chest, and back, Holy and shit. then shot four times from behind at San Leandro Bar June 6, 1989. What the freak? Another Hells Angels member, Michael Music, was wounded in the attack. Police stated that O'Farrell's killing may have been the result of a power struggle. Well, now we're yeah, now we're moving on between right. uh, infighting here. Jeez, uh, it's a power struggle between the Hell's Angels and the Aryan Brotherhood in the East Bay. Huh? I guess we're not. We're oh, gonna go shit. against them in the Aryan Brotherhood now. Yeah, but the Aryan Brotherhood—they don't really do. That's a prison gang. Yeah, but they're out in the streets. Yeah. Not like that, though. Maybe. <laughs> Two Aryan Brotherhood members charged with O'Farrell's homicide, Aaron Jerry Marsh and Michael Bruce Tank Shepard, were arrested in the following weeks. Yeah, this is freaking dangerous living, man. Holy shit. I'd rather be a mobster. <laughs> Fuck. Man. Marsh, he was taken into custody. Well, at least they had, at least mobsters had a protocol. Right. Shit. They just don't go and just blatantly out in the public and just start shooting and shit. Ridiculous. Marsh was taken into custody in Manteca on June 27th. Shepard was apprehended by San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department deputies and California Highway Patrol troopers on Route 60 on the 26th of July after a high-speed chase through Chino and Ontario counties. Shepard allegedly admitted his guilt in the murder to his lawyer, Stephen Gore. And I did it. Allegedly. He can't. No, we can never figure that out because it's against the law, right? Right. Marsh was strangled to death in Pelican Bay State Prison on 25th of July, 1997, by cellmate Gary Littrell after refusing an order from Aryan Brotherhood leadership to murder another inmate. And Shepard committed suicide by hanging himself in his cell at Santa Ana Central Jail in December 2004, shortly after pleading guilty in a Rigo case. Jeez. Did they really, though? Right. October 6, 2001, a fight between a small group of Hells Angels and Vagos escalated oh, into a mass brawl involving up to 80 participants at a micro motorcycle swap meet. At the Orange County Fairgrounds in Costa Mesa. Motorcycle parts such as handlebars and tailpipes were used as weapons in the melee. I would think so. Which ended when officers from four local police departments and the Orange County Sheriff's Department arrived at the scene about five minutes after the fight began. That's, well, that's a quick response. Right. And the bikers began to flee. A man was arrested on suspicion of assaulting a police officer and two injured people were treated at the scene. Oh, that's it. Damn, it could have gone way out of hand. They're using fucking handlebars and exhaust. Holy shit. Investigators are unable to determine the amount of property damage and the number of people injured due to the lack of cooperation from witnesses, obviously. It was also unclear if members of Mongols, who also attended the swap meet, became involved. 2011, president of San Jose chapter Jeffrey Pettigrew was shot four times in the back on 23rd of September 2011 at a casino in Sparks, Nevada. 
two California members of the Vagos Motorcycle Club at the crime scene were also shot but survived. Oh, jeez. Damn. Who shot him? Well, Pettigrew was in Sparks for Street Vibrations, which is a long-running motorcycle festival in the Reno area. Sparks declared a state of emergency after another motorcyclist wearing Vagos colors was shot shortly after. Yeah. Uh, Cesar Villagrana, who had been with Pettigrew, was charged with discharging a firearm and other offenses. Oh, no. What? Wow. Ernesto Manuel Gonzalez was later arrested in San Francisco in connection with the death of Pettigrew. Another Hells Angel, Steve Tawson. An enforcer for the Santa Cruz chapter was shot at Pettigrew's funeral. Oh, shit. According to the police, after the shooting, the suspect, Steve Ruiz, Ruiz, disappeared, and one or more people tampered with the crime scene, washing away bloodstains and removing evidence of the shooting. Oh, Oh. no. Is this... It's an inside job there? Yes. Sounds like it to me. Man, I don't like how that is. A funeral is supposed to be, like, neutral ground, man. Come on, guys. Oh, like a funeral or a wedding or a bar mitzvah. <laughs> Hells Angels member James Vincent Dixon was among five people arrested after a shooting at a Third Street Tavern in Highland, 6 November 2021. Left three people injured, including two of suspects. 24th April 2022, Dixon murdered and three others wounded in a shooting at Marquis Lounge in San Bernardino. In an incident that law enforcement theorized was carried out in retaliation for Dixon's killing, six Vagos and one Hell's Angels were injured when a group of angels opened fire on Vagos bikers on Route 95 in Anderson, Nevada on May 29, 2022. Yeah, you got through that one, huh? Why was only one Angels? Well, well, he was riding with the Vagos? Well, they probably just were shooting back, I'm sure, right? Yeah, kicking it back to January 22nd, 1972, five Oakland Hell's Angels, Sonny Barger, Russell Stanley, Bia, Bobby V., <laughs> Bobby V, The Dirt England, Jerry Benjamin Popkin, and Bert... Sam- no reason for the middle name, guys. Right. Uh, Bert Stiff Stephenson were charged with attempted murder, kidnapping, and assault with a deadly weapon after being arrested while driving through Redwood Regional Park by police and park rangers who discovered two bound, gagged, and beaten club prospects oh, shit. in the trunk of the vehicle. I remember that. All five pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of unlawful imprisonment. It was just hazing, man. Right, that's it all hazing. it is. They'll be all right. September 1972. Angels member William Whispering Bill Pfeiffer, who was suffering from terminal throat cancer while incarcerated at Almadia County Jail in Oakland on various state and federal charges. He offered police information on Angels' burial ground in exchange for immunity. Oh, shit. In order to spend the remainder of his life as a free man. His testimony led Mendocino County deputies to a ranch owned by former Oakland Hells Angels Chapter Vice President George J. Baby Huey Weathern and his wife Helen near Yucca. Yukia, Yukia, where they discovered the bodies of two club prospects, Charles Charlie Baker and Thomas Shepard, Big Tom Scholl. They also discovered a woman, Patricia Ann McKnight. They discovered these guys in abandoned wells on the 30th of October and the first, what is, skipped Halloween. <laughs> right, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> the 30th of October and the 1st of November, 1972. Jeez, old well, Baker and Shaw have been beaten and strangled to death by Pfeiffer or Pfeiffer, whatever his name is, and other members of the club's Richmond chapter and a- after being spiked with LSD at a party on January 15th, 1971. Oh, shit. While uh, McKnight was killed by a gunshot to the head. Yeah, that bitch. You know, they're just going to kill her. Uh, Police also seized cocaine and stolen firearms at that ranch. That bitch. <laughs> Weathern and his wife were charged with drug and stolen property possession. Oh, man. Four other Hells Angels, Edward Jr. Carter, Chester M. Festus Green, William Mark Zorro Mitten, and William John Moran were charged with murder and accessory to murder. Oh, jeez. Holy shit. There can't be no members left. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Weather became a government witness. Of course he did. And charges against him and his wife dismissed. Well, of course they were. While in protective custody, November 7th, 1972, he attempted to blind himself by gouging pencils into his eyes before attempting to strangle his wife. Oh, Carter pled guilty to accessory to Moida, and charges against Green and Mitten dropped. 5th of April, 1973, Moran was convicted of murder of Baker and acquitted of Scholl's murder. He got one. Pfeiffer, he died after the first few days of trial, during which Green testified for a prosecution. Richmond chapter president, rotten Richard Allen Barker, was convicted of first-degree moita and involuntary manslaughter in the deaths of Baker and Scholl in 1975. Jeez. Well, Theodore L. Ted DeWild, president of the Vallejo Hells Angels, was indicted on federal gun law violation charges in June of 73 after allegedly selling two dynamite bombs and a machine gun to an undercover federal agent. No, man. 
He initially pleaded guilty to the charges and was scheduled to be sentenced May 74, but Judge Philip Wilkins granted a motion by DeWald's lawyer, allowing him to withdraw the guilty plea and demand a jury trial. Oh, shit. He later disappeared, allegedly murdered, welded inside a 55-gallon drum, and disposed of in the San Francisco Bay by his fellow Hells Angels, became concerned that meth addiction and pending prison time may have caused him to cooperate with the faux pose. I would have to say so. Probably. Wow. Damn. Vallejo Hells Angels Chapter President Dennis Meir was one of five men charged with various counts of rape, sex perversion in relation to January 13, 1974, sexual assault reported by a 23-year-old Richmond woman. The victim in this very case died of a heroin overdose two days after attorney Hugh Kamiski who was to retain as counsel for one of the accused, inadvertently revealed her home address during pretrial proceedings. Oh, you dumbass. Uh, Meyer, Meir, Meir, Meyer? Sure, Meir. Meir later disappeared. According to informants, he was murdered by the angels who believed that he was cooperating with authorities. Holy shit, she didn't die of no hair or no, no. overdose either. I mean, she died of an overdose. But. Well, right, <laughs> not uh, willingly. Right. right. Uh, Oakland Hells Angels chapter member Ray Doe... Ray Dale Stork Kefauver, who had been scheduled to testify for the prosecution in a Redwood City murder trial, was found shot to death in a ravine near Port Costa, June 16, 1974. August 24th, the bodies of Hells Angels associate Alvin Lloyd Prater and his wife Mary Ellen were discovered by the side of a road near Sunal. Jeez. They had each been fatally shot in the head two days earlier after being handcuffed and beaten. Holy shit. They were laying on... Either somebody had their bodies for two days or they're laying on the road for two days. Either Damn, or. Yeah, man. These guys are like rivaling the Clinton hit kill list. <laughs> Holy shit. Elvin Prater allegedly murdered over the theft of an engine block from a Harley Davidson motorcycle belonging to Hell's Angels member. 1979 of June, James Ezekiel Jim Jim Brands, an enforcer and a senior member of the Hell's Angels Oakland chapter, was charged with murders of Key Fiver. Key Fiver? Key Fiver? Was charged with the murders of Key Fiver and the Praters. As part of the racketeering case against the club, Brands, who was implicated in a total of four or five homicides, was ultimately never convicted of any. Oh, shit. The initial trial ended in a mistrial in July of 1980, as did the subsequent trial in February 1981. Well, unfortunately for him, he later hanged himself in prison in 1994. The murders remain unsolved. Mark no. Gary Robles, sergeant at arms of the Hells Angels San Diego chapter, was fatally shot several times in the back. Holy shit. Before his body was discovered in his parked van in San Diego's Claremont neighborhood, October 76. What kind of fucking uh, biker has a van? <laughs> Probably like Astro type deal. You know, those are cool. Sure. <laughs> Three former Hells Angels later told the investigators that Robles was killed by a fellow club member, Douglas Chester Dutch Schultz. What? Oh, I'm sure they did. With approval from the Oakland mother chapter during an internal dispute. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they told him that. Oh, yeah. Ain't that crazy? Dutch Schultz. Remember, he wanted to kill the right. Dewey guy, and then they the commission planned to take, or they took him out. Right. But now Dutch Schultz got his, well, this is actually before then, probably. Right. Around the same time, actually. Yeah. Oh, shit. Holy shit. Wow. San Francisco Hells Angel yeah, chapter president, that, Harry the Horse the Flamborous, and his girlfriend, Danette Barrett. They're each shot in the head and murdered. The Nat Barrett. After being bound at their home in Daly City on January 6, Jeez. 1977. $22,000 worth of cocaine and a quantity of LSE was also stolen in a quantity. <laughs> $22,000 worth of cocaine and some LSD was also stolen from a safe at the house. How would they know that? Right. Prior to his death, Flamberis had resisted the angel's move into prostitution, narcotics, racketeering. Right? He's like, come on, man. We're already getting enough trouble with all this other shit. Now you want to get into prostitution and narcotics, racketeering? <laughs> his successor as San Francisco chapter president, Flash Gordon Gary Grow, operated a brothel in partnership with Otis Buck Garrett, president of the Nomads chapter in Vallejo. Mm. Wanted him out. Well, Flamberis was laid to rest at Cypress Lawn Memorial Park in Colma on January 15th. And his Harley Davidson motorcycle was buried with him three months later, April 22nd. Oh, oh shit. That. That's loud. I'll do whatever you want. I guess. His funeral was attended by approximately 200 members of the Hells Angels, you know, including the ones that killed him. All right. And other, miters, miters, uh, and other motorcycle clubs from as far away as Hawaii, Hawaii, Anchorage, Alaska, and Lowell, Massachusetts. Oh, shit. Wow. Although police at the time suspected two or three possible motives, the murders have never been solved. Of course. The house in which Flamberis and Barrett were killed was burned down in an apparent arson April 24th, 1977. Oh, you know damn well that was happening. That's three months after. Yeah, three days after they buried his bike. Oh, shit. Maybe they, mm, wow. Um, three members of Angels Los Angeles chapter arrested 6th of January, 1978. Connection with the 
theft of 2,000 pounds of dynamite, Damn. which is stolen from a construction site in San Diego County. Yeah, you know, just construction sites, just why would you not lock it up? Right. The trio were found in possession of the stolen explosive, as well as a machine gun and other weapons. Following the seizure, search warrants served on the residents of all known members of the Los Angeles Hells Angels. Oh, oh shit. Geez. When serving a warrant at the home of Chapter President Oro Ray, Indian Ray Glore, police found him dead with nine 22 caliber bullet wounds to the head. Holy shit, nine? A little insane. You don't need one. <laughs> Jeez. Well, 22 is not bad. Maybe two. 22 is not bad. Nine? Big. Wow. Well, it's safe to say he didn't kill himself. <laughs> I mean, uh, could. maybe you tried the first time. Uh, officers discovered files on every Hells Angels member in the United States and Europe at Glor's residence. Oh, oh shit. Wow. According to the statement given to investigators by one of the Hells Angels arrested in the explosive seizure um, by the name of old man John Noble, Glor was assassinated over a personal dispute with Russell Beya, who was a senior member of the Oakland chapter. Oh, wow. Noble claimed to have been present at a meeting of the California chapter officers in Oakland, at which a majority of the participants voted in favor of killing Glory. Oh, so get shit. this fucking guy out of here. Damn. And these are chapter presidents. Right. Man. This is insanity. Holy shit. Bert Stephenson, Sergey Walton, both members of Hells Angels Oakland chapter, charged with weapons and narcotic violations when the Popo found loaded pistols, hand grenades, tear gas canisters, blasting caps, Three bags of cocaine, eight thousand nine hundred and eleven dollars in cash in the car in which they were traveling after they were stopped for speeding. So, why would you, you idiots? They stopped in Sacramento for speed in March of nineteen seventy-two. Walton pled guilty to cocaine possession and appeared as a witness during the trial of Stephenson, who was convicted on five felony charges of possessing narcotics and transporting explosives on February sixteenth, nineteen seventy-three. So I'm guessing Stephenson was driving, because whoever's driving getting possession of all that shit. So Walton pled guilty to cocaine. He was like, I had cocaine, but all that other shit was, oh, Bert. Right, he got charged with transporting explosives. Right. That dude was Bert. He was driving a car. Right. Members of the San Diego Hells Angels chapter were suspected in the theft of 2,000 pounds of dynamite from a construction site. Yeah. They were suspected in that uh, theft of the dynamite at the construction site. Oakland chapter member, Sergey Walton, was arrested in October 79 and convicted in March 80 of possessing a machine gun. Oh. He fled from the San Francisco County Jail March 24th, 1981, while awaiting transfer to a federal prison in Illinois, which was he was going to serve uh, eight years in. His disappearance was not discovered until March 28th, 1981, when he was scheduled to be transferred. Damn, this dude had four days on a run with nobody knowing. Holy, he could be gone. Well, unfortunately for him, May 28th of that same year, he was apprehended by the ATF and the U.S. Marshal Service at a cabin in Ben Lamon. Uh, in the Santa Cruz Mountains. No shit. Sure. Two women found in the cabin with Walton, Kimberly Lee Kimbra Townsend and Lofty Gail Owen, who was the wife of Hells Angels member Kenneth Owen. Why is she there? Hmm. Were charged with harboring a fugitive. Two machine guns uh, and accompanying ammunition were also found. Can't have a machine gun without ammo. Right. He was then sentenced in February 1983 for the jailbreak to 10 years in prison to be served consecutively with the prior eight year. Okay. Mm. He later became a government witness and entered the the wit oh, set. Geez. Of course, why not? Wow. Fuck it. Right. Former Deputy Sheriff Louis Lou Ivankovich pled guilty February 18, 1983, to conspiring to aid Walton in an escape. Oh. He was sentenced to three years in federal prison. Damn. Walton dead October 19, 2006, age 62. How do we know? He was in witness protection. Right. November. 1981, task force of federal, state, and local law enforcement officers raided a Hells Angels clubhouse in San Diego, confiscated machine guns, shotguns, more than 50 handguns, explosives, explosive manuals, torture kits, electronic eavesdropping equipment, wires, police radio scanners, and narcotics. Might as well top it off a little sprinkle, a little crack on here. Let's yeah. get out of here. There we go. Hells Angels member Robert Lee Wildman Bright was charged with criminal mayhem after he, <laughs> aided by two other inmates, used a spoon heated on a hot plate to burn a tattoo, which resembled the Hells Angels insignia off of a cellmate's arm. Oh, so you get the shit out of here. Right. At a San Diego County jail where he was awaiting trial on a narcotics charge. Bright, who was a Marine Corps veteran of the Vietnam War, died of natural causes at the age of 60, April 10th, 2006. Died of natural causes at 60? Yeah, why not? Um... Yeah, whatever that guy that had the tattoo they were burning off on, he fucked up doing something. You ain't kidding. Wow, you only get that it's if like, it's major, yeah. That's like John Dutton. 
Cut that damn uh, right. brand right off your chest, boy. Mm, two members of San Diego Hell's Angels chapter, Michael Varner, chapter president, and his brother, John G. Varner, was shot to death by an unidentified gunman in a tavern in Modesto, 6th November, 1973. Police were unable to establish a motive for the murders. Hell's Angels member was hospitalized with a skull fracture and multiple abrasions when he was beaten unconscious by a group of Bob patrons after he brandished a knife following a disagreement with another patron at an East San Diego bar on 26th of January in 1975. <laughs> they don't have a name for that, Hell's Angels guy? Jeez, dude. I mean, <clears throat> it's just one after another. This is ridiculous. February 16th, that same year, a heat and savages, air conditioning Barely company, human. <laughs> owned by the patron and his partner in Santee, was targeted in an arson attack, which law enforcement believe was carried out by the Hell's Angels in retaliation for the injuries suffered by the Hell's Angels in the earlier incident Jeez. in the bar. Hell's Angels member... Gerald Butch Lester shot two people in a van in Sacramento County in October 26, 1977, killing one, wounding the other. Lester used a sleeping bag to conceal his victims' bodies and then dumped their vehicle in a river. Oh, shit. Wait, he wounded the other. You put the other one in the damn thing, too? Oh, shit. The incident for which Lester spent four years in state prison, was that? It was reportedly the result of a dispute with 5,000 worth of meth. Oh, look, come on. And he only spent five years in prison? Jeez, no wonder why. She's right. What the fuck? Who the fuck is that? Uh, uh, AG here. All right. Prosecutor. Oh, right. Somebody. Right. Uh, Kamamala. <laughs> Lawrence Richard, Large Larry, Lajanez, a senior member of the Hells Angels San Fernando Valley chapter, and his girlfriend, Tammy Ann Banigan. <laughs> <laughs> What's my name? Tammy Ann Banigan. <laughs> they were shot to death in a converted industrial garage in Chatsworth, which was in L.A., where they lived on where they lived on December 3rd, 1998, by Daniel Ray Waring. turned an industrial garage into a living space. Right. They were murdered by Daniel Ray Waring, who was described by prosecutors as an aspirant Hells Angels member involved in a feud with with uh, Large Larry over meth dealing. <laughs> <laughs> so he wants to get in the club. Right. Waring, he robbed and murdered the couple, shooting Large Larry five or six times in the head Damn. before also shooting Tammy Ann Brannigan to eliminate her as a witness. Jeez, Warren, who was I swear I won't say anything. Uh, you damn right. Uh, Two. Right. Pew, pew. Uh, Warren, who was a tow truck driver, uh, worked as an informant for the California Highway Patrol detective oh, for over shit. 10 years. He was convicted of first degree murder on October 12th. They were like, come on, guy. Right. Uh, October 12, 2001, he was convicted and sentenced to two consecutive life sentences without parole, February 8, 2002. He died at age 60, September 27, 2017. The case was documented in the North Mission Road episode, Hell's Angels Mystery, which aired on August 22nd, 2005. Don't know what channel. Right. Um, 2001, 11 men associated with the Hell's Angels in Fresno were arrested for allegedly assaulting members of another motorcycle club that had ignored their order oh to disband. Oh, my goodness. This is just in- ridiculous. Ventura Hell's Please Angels. Don't stop. All right. Ventura Hell's Angels chapter member, Thomas Heath, sentenced to 35 years in prison. In February 2012, after being convicted of a fifth strike offense. Well, at least you got five. Right. 1992, he was sentenced to seven years imprisonment after being convicted of assault with a deadly weapon and dissuading a witness by threats for the beating of his wife at a hamburger stand. Heath was sentenced to an additional seven years in 1994 when he pled guilty to two counts of first degree moita for killing a rival biker and an innocent bystander with a bomb in L.A. on September 24th. How are you only getting fucking seven more years for bombing people? Right. Holy shit. I just don't understand this. This is crazy. Seven years for bombing, huh? On November 22nd, 2010, he threatened the lives of his female roommate and her son, a crime for which he was found guilty December 16th, 2011. Um, He was found guilty of dissuading a witness, threatening a witness, and street terrorism. Oh, shit. June 6, 2023, a group of Hells Angels allegedly attacked three African-American men in the Ocean Beach neighborhood of San Diego. One of the victims was stabbed, another beaten unconscious, third managed to flee. Oh. 17 Hells Angels members and associates were arrested September 17, 2023, charged with carrying out the attack in association with a criminal streak. Holy shit. Jeez, dude. Holy shit. Now we're going to take a look at, like, Legit murders. We know these guys committed, I guess. All right. Three Hells Angels members and one of their girlfriends were charged on the March 8th, 1972 with the murder of Bradley Parkhurst and Alameda, Alameda Longshoreman, who was beaten and stomped to death in the basement of an Oakland home on the 24th of February. Parkhurst had arrived at the residence of Connie Perry, an Angel's girlfriend, to inspect a motorcycle and was murdered by Angel's member Russell Baya and Moldy Marvin <laughs> William Gilbert after Gilbert took offense to the N-words handshake 
<laughs> supposedly that's what he said, from Parkhurst, who was pronounced dead at Highland Hospital. It is believed that due to Bea's status as a senior Hells Angel, Gilbert was pressured by the club to testify and exploit Bea during the trial. All right. Well, despite his testimony, both Gilbert and Bea were convicted of second-degree murder oh, August sure. 17, 1972. Following the verdict, the Hells Angels member approached Gilbert and threatened his life in the presence of a deputy sheriff due to his failure to exonerate Bay. Oh, shit. Gilbert later moved to Spokane, Washington, and become vice president of the Hells Angels chapter there. Oh, wow. And died at the age of 65, June 22nd, 2007. How? All right. All right. Good for you, Gilbert. What the fuck? Wow. Let's take a look at the Compton family. Oh, this is the murder of the Compton family. The Margo Compton began working at a Hells Angels owned massage parlor in San Francisco. She was required to perform sex acts as on patrons. Early 1977, in order to pay off a debt for amphetamine given to her on consignment by Otis Buck Garrett, president of the Vallejo Hells Angels chapter, Compton contacted law enforcement after she was beaten and raped by a patron, resulting in Garrett being indicted on felony morality charges. July 1977, Compton testified on behalf of the prosecution in California state trial that she and four other women working at the parlor were being pimped by the Angels and that the operation was under the protection of two San Francisco Police Department vice squad officers Uh-oh. who were bribed with cash and sexual favors. I mean, there's probably more than two cops involved. There's probably oh, all geez. over the damn place. After testifying, Compton fled to a cottage in Gaston, Oregon, where she, her six-year-old twin daughters, Sylvia and Sandra, and Gary Selsler, the 19-year-old son of her boyfriend, were shot dead with a 22 caliber handgun after being bound with rope on the 7th of August, 1977. Garrett in prison after being convicted of pimping and pandering in October 1977. 1991, Garrett and Hells Angels hang around Robert G. Bug Eye, Rob Bob McClure were charged with the murders of while in prison on separate narcotic convictions after prison informants reported that McClure had bragged of committing the crime. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Well, McClure was convicted of quadruple murder and sentenced to four consecutive life terms July 30th, 1994. Garrett also sentenced to four consecutive life sentences in prison after being found guilty on four counts of murder July 26, 1995. Over 40 witnesses, including former Aryan Brotherhood council member Michael Iron Mike Thompson, testified during each of the trials, which was held in Hillsborough, Oregon. According to the prosecutors, Garrett had ordered the killings of Compton and her daughters in retaliation for her testimony. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cesar was killed just because he happened to be there. Right. What? So they had planned to kill the little twin daughters, too? What a bunch uh, of pieces you know, of fucking you shit. You know that. They're killing them all. Yeah, but they actually planned to kill the daughters. Right. The other 19-year-old was just killed because he was there. Jeez. Thompson claimed that Aryan Brotherhood had been approached by the Angels' leadership in California to carry out the murders, but had turned down the contract because of their unwillingness to kill children. McClure's alleged accomplice in the murders, fellow Angels associate Benjamin Way, Psycho Silva, was never charged in this very case. Prosecutors, they felt it was, wasn't was even worth the expense and effort as he was already waiting execution at San Quentin State Prison for the 1981 kidnapping, rape, torture, and murder of two college students in Lassen County. Oh, what I mean, the fuck? yeah. Right. Why put him through it? That's a waste of money. Well, additionally, Garrett was a suspect in the possible homicide of Rhonda Lynn Yoakum. <laughs> was a 19-year-old Filipina-American woman who was last seen getting into a car with Garrett in Oroville, February 10th, 85, before she disappeared. Jeez. Garrett was purported to be taking Yoakum to the Klamath Falls, Oregon area in order for her to flee the state to avoid a court appearance in a criminal matter. She's never been located and is believed that she is the victim of the moita. Garrett died in prison at the age of 74, February 12th, 2007. Isn't this guy, like, considered, like, a serial killer? The Garrett guy? I think it's a serial killer when it's gang activity shit. Out of that, we'd have a lot more serial killers. <laughs> you ain't kidding, right? Let's take a look at Maureen and Telesforo Batista, Los Angeles Hells Angels member and meth manufacturer Robert Frederick Garceau, stabbed to death his girlfriend, Maureen Batista, and her 14-year-old son, Telesforo, in a Bakersfield apartment on the 6th of September or the 7th of September in 1984. After Batista threatened to inform her former lover, drug dealer Eddie Nash, of a Garceau's, Garceau's, Garceau's whereabouts and drug operation. Damn, who's this Eddie Nash guy? He's a nightclub owner. Oh, so he's allegedly the uh, mastermind behind the Wonderland murders. Oh, if no you guys shit. know what those are. Wow. Yeah. Oh, no shit. Shit. Look at this guy. So he was scared of Nash, probably, then, huh? Well, something like it. She's like, I'm going to tell him where he is. He's going to fucking murder you. Right. Oh, yeah, bitch. Motherfucker. Right. God, you die. You die. <laughs> no, you die. 
Nash had previously paid Garcou to fulfill a contract, which he failed to perform, and Nash was subsequently searching for him. Oh, well, that makes sense. Well, two of Garcou's acquaintances, Greg Rambo and Larry Tom Whittington, disposed of the bodies by placing them oh, in a side a hollow bedroom dresser, which was then buried beneath a layer of concrete in the yard behind Rambo's residence in Shandon. Uh-huh. Well, then Garceau shot and killed Rambo, one of his drug business partners in Monterey County, on February 19th, 1985, after he became concerned that Rambo may have become an informant. Mm. Garceau and another acquaintance, Harlan Codd, then despite... You know he did that. I wouldn't even trust this Garceau guy. guy. What the fuck are you doing shit with him for? Right. He definitely needs to be taken care of. Right. Shit. Uh, well, they then deposited Rambo's body in a ravine at Deer Creek in Tulare County. In view of his uh, Rambo's disappearance... And fearing for her own life, his wife Susan contacted the Kern County Sheriff's Office March 6, 1985. That's the worst thing you can do. She's like, uh, wow. something's wrong here. Well, her statements led to excavations of Batista's bodies on the 8th of March, 1985, and the rest of Garceau and Gorman. Oh, right. Why would they do that when they? she probably knew that they buried the fucking people on his right. property? Dumbasses. And that, that led to the rest of Garceau and Gorman on the 14th of March, in 18, 1985. 1987, Garcou sentenced to death in Kern County for Batista murders and an additional 33 years of life in Monterey County for Rambo's murder. <laughs> well, he didn't, even get, he didn't even get to get sentenced to death because he died from cancer at the age of 58 on December 29, 2004. He spent all these... How, how do you get sentenced to death and then spend 15 years in prison while waiting on death row? That just don't make no damn sense. Well, if you're going to get sentenced to death, kill the motherfucker. Yeah, but how many were in... Right, like, please, and right. are fucking um, uh, trying to get overturned and all I that. Yes, but still, shit. since death is murder, him right there. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the Grandowski family murders. Oh shit! October fifth, nineteen eighty six. Former Hell's Angels member William Ivan Billy Grandowski, his wife Patricia, five year old daughter Dallas, and seventeen year old stepson Nolan Vandergriff were murdered in their home near Fort Bragg by Gerald Michael Butch Lester and Charles Anthony Chuck Diaz. There was the president and the vice president of the Vallejo. They're doing this shit themselves. <sighs> the Vallejo Els Angels chapter. Billy Grandalski, Patty, and Vandegriff were each killed by a single gunshot wound to the head from Lester, mm. while Dallas Grandalski died of a uh, result of multiple stab wounds from Diaz, which severed her spinal cord and caused <sighs> a near decapitation. Damn, they hated her. Dude, I mean, they hated she her. She was fucking five years old. Holy shit. Holy fuck. This is messed up. She was also shot by Lester post mortem. Billy Grindowski had been expelled by the Vallejo Hells Angels on September 28th, less than a week before the massacre. And Lester and Diaz had come to his home to retrieve a monetary debt, his motorcycle, and items of club property in his possession. $900 worth of Hells Angels support decals and a Hells Angels tattoo on his left arm, reading 84 in, 86 out. I wonder what that means. According to investigators, Grindowski was ousted from Hells Angels due to the drug debt. It's been an 86. Did well, he, he got get, a new tattoo. Did he get it out? He got a new tattoo. 84 in, 86 out. Yeah, but does 86 out mean uh, 86 is like code for murder or dying or something? Right, 86, uh, yeah, yeah, 86, you're getting, uh, you're getting you're ousted. Nixed. Right. Wow, dude. They That's just, just went, crazy that it happened in 1986 <laughs> then, huh? There was no reason to kill these guys. They just went there for the motorcycle and the decals and shit. What the hell? Well, Lester and Diaz later claimed the killings. Uh, began after a forty-five caliber pistol that Lester was using to threaten Billy accidentally discharged, killing him instantly. Oh, so you had to kill everybody else. And that the remaining family members were killed to eliminate witnesses. Oh, get the hell out of here. After his death, uh, after his death, Grandalski's Hell's Angel tattoo was severed from his body and later disposed of by Lester in the toilet of an RV owned by associates of his. <laughs> Dude, it's in the RV show. Wow. The handgun used in the killings was melted down with a blowtorch, and the slag was scattered over several northern California counties by Little Mike Tinkersley, a member of the Hells Angels Sonoma County chapter. Cool for you, Little Mike. Idiot. Scattered over several. Okay. Wow. The day after the murders, Lester and Sonoma County Hells Angels member Big Arm Charles Francis Haas returned to the home and set fire to it in an effort to destroy evidence. The corpse of the family were discovered by firefighters. Well, no, oh, my gosh. He's got to be the dumbest motherfuckers. Right. Haas implicated Diaz and Lester in the murders after becoming a cooperating, cooperating witness for the government in February 1994 while awaiting sentencing on a federal drug conviction relating to a large-scale methamphetamine ring in Virginia. Damn. He was like, hey, man, what if I tell you some shit that happened in California? Oh, uh, he was granted immunity from prosecution in the case uh, other than for the murders. 
I don't like that. You should never be granted immunity just because you know something else that happened. You committed a crime still, motherfucker. Go to jail, bitch. They should have a jail for uh, for the witness protection people. <laughs> well, it's kind of a jail, ain't it? Not really. You're allowed to do whatever the fuck you want. All right. Uh, he was then sentenced to 20... Wait. He was granted immunity from prosecution in the murder case other than the murders. So he was still going to get charged for murder. Oh, okay. Uh, and he also had hope for a reduced sentence in the drug case. He was ultimately sentenced to 27 years imprisonment March 31st, 94. Yeah, so you're opening your mouth to nothing, you dumb fuck. Well, you could have got life. Still. Or death penalty. I think uh, that was still going on there. Well, don't worry. He was still being in prison for right. 30 years. Really, though? 27 years? Probably out in 20. Right. May 5th, 95, Diaz, by then the Vallejo chapter president, was arrested in Ukiah, or Ukiah, and Lester was apprehended in Fort Smith, Arkansas, where he was living after leaving the club in June of 87. Oh. They were each charged with four counts of murder. I bet they were. Tankersley also emerged as a witness in February 1996. Damn, dude, ten years. When he was arrested in Arkansas on a fugitive warrant for assault charges and he faced in Marin and Sonoma counties, California. He was also charged with three counts of attempted capital moita after he used his vehicle to ram the car of the police officers who arrested him. You can't do that in 1996, maybe in 76. <laughs> Tankersley had been expelled from the Sonoma County Hells Angels in 1987 and fled the state to escape retribution from the club and also to avoid criminal prosecution. And dude's on a run. He went to Arkansas. Jeez. Due to his testimony, the attempted murder charges against him were reduced to three counts of aggravated assault, for which he was sentenced to serve six years imprisonment, three and a half years suspended, concurrent to any sentence stemming from the assault charges in California, from oh, no. which he ultimately escaped prosecution for. So no he got three shit. years. If you're running from a biker club, I would go to, like, Canada. Why? They're there, too, bud. Yeah, they're in Alaska. How often do you get to ride a bike in Alaska? All the time. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, following two mistrials, Lester was convicted of four counts of murder on November 6, 97. He was then sentenced January 23rd, 98 to four life terms at the Maximum Security Pelican Bay State Prison. I would move to Mackinac City or Mackinac Island. Right. No motor vehicle was allowed <laughs> right, here. Mother yeah. get bicycles. Right. Ding, ching, ching, ching. The Hells Angels Bicycle. It's a Schwinn Club. Right. <laughs> Only Schwinn's here, baby. No huffies. <laughs> Charges against Diaz were dismissed twice due to lack of evidence, once in 1996 and again in January 4th, 1999. But he was reindicted on 25th of October, 1999, charged with the murder of Dallas Grindowski. Diaz, convicted of first-degree murder on the 5th of May, 2004, sentenced to serve 26 years of life in prison on the 10th of June, 2004. Three co-defendants, Mary Ann Hodgkins, Sonoma County Hells Angels member Robert L. Huffman, and Sammy Louise Lester, the wife of Gerald Lester, they were convicted of conspiring to obstruct justice. Sammy Lester sentenced two years and eight months in state prison, fined two hundred dollars on May of twenty seventh, in two thousand four. He was he was fined two hundred pounds euros for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> check, but yeah. Yeah, check. Huffman, sentenced to one year and eight months in jail on 10th of June 2004, and Hodgkins was given a three-year sentence ordered to pay $600 restitution on June 29th, 2004. Let's take a look at some targeted law enforcement personnel here. San Jose Police Department Sergeant John Crack survived an attempt on his life when a bomb detonated oh, near his car February 19th, 1977. They bombing people in the 70s. Sure they did. Crack, who was in uh, charge of all San Jose Police Department motorcycle gang investigations, had been involved in arresting. Of course, he had. Right. And he had testified against club members on several occasions. All right. James Ezekiel Jim Jim Brandes, vice president and former and enforcer for the Oakland chapter, was charged with the attempted murder of Crack, as well as other crimes as part of a racketeering case against the club June of 79. Okay. His first trial ended in mistrial July 80, as did the retrial in February of 81. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Don't that just piss you off. These guys are like, re mistrial? What the hell? Vallejo Hells Angels chapter member <laughs> Kenneth Owen is charged with two felony counts after police discovered meth and prohibited firearms, a Derringer, two rifles, and an Ithaca 16-gauge shotgun at his home, a rural property in Solano County. That's where they found it. They did that during a raid by Solano County Sheriff's Office's narcotics detective, William <laughs> O. Bill Zerby. Now the cops gets a freaking uh, nickname. Right, what God, the fuck? <laughs> that happened on June 21st, 1977. November 14th, 1977, Oakland Angels Chapter Vice President James Patton Sleepy Jim Brandis found to be in possession of a pound of meth, which was hidden behind a threshold plate in the door of his Lincoln Continental, as well as a police radio, a radio band directory, a homemade police siren, 
blue flasher, a pocket-sized tape recorder, radio transmitter, and a device for detecting surveillance equipment after he was pulled over by Zerby and his partner, Inspector Richard Grundy. Damn, dude, that's all, like, isn't that a crime? He was, like, trying to... Person and a police officer, right. it looked like. Uh, also among the contraband was a military handbook on booby traps hmm. and an address book containing the home address, phone number, and the license plate number of Zerby. Oh, so shit. So he had a handbook so on... So Zerby pulled this guy over and then found uh, basically a plan right. to kill him by this right. guy. So he had a handbook on bras? Yeah. Booby trap. Booby trap, <laughs> right, I get it. <laughs> January 30th, 1978, Zerby was seriously injured as a, and deafened as a result of an explosive device oh. detonated as he was entering a vehicle parked in front of his home in Vallejo. The detective was en route to court for a pre-hearing in the meth trial for Brandes at the time. 42 Hells Angels members and associates were served with grand jury subpoenas March 27, 78, as part of the investigation into that bomb. Damn, they were messing around. In or around November 1978, Brandes stated to the reporter for Rolling Stone magazine that Zerby drew a line and stepped over it. I don't take that from anybody in the streets, and I sure ain't going to take it from him. Oh, big bad Brandes, huh? I don't let nobody come around and shove me around. I don't think anyone does if he's a man. Wow. Good for you, bud. You're a man. The following year, Brandes and Owen were charged with attempted murder of Zerby as part of the racketeering case against the club. They're all to be acquitted of the attempted murder. <laughs> oh, shit. Of course. Jeez. 1982, Brandes arrived in Australia with a photograph and the home address of the Victoria State Policeman Barb, Am- Barb Armstrong, who was in dispute with the Angels Melbourne chapter. Jeez, he went all the way to Australia <laughs> to do that shit? I shit myself. <laughs> he was then deported to the United States. <laughs> He ultimately committed suicide by hanging himself in prison circa 1994. All that for that. What a piece of shit. Owen died July 4th. Didn't he just say he's a man? Right. I'm a man. And then he hung himself. Pussy. Uh, Zerby, who was forced to retire from his law enforcement agencies due to the injuries sustained in that bombing, died in 2021 at the age of 79. Wow. The 1982 made-for-television film Hear No Evil was based on the incident. (laughs) No shit. Look at that. Hear No Evil because he's deaf, get it? Right. Two San Diego Hells Angels chapter prospects, Robert Michael Mexican Mike Johnson, William Lester Filthy Bill Peters. They are charged with the conspiring to murder San Diego County District Attorney's Office Organized Crime Unit Investigator <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Raymond C. Morgan. All right. After being arrested while conducting surveillance of Morgan's residence in Poway on, obviously, you guys are, I guess it's not legal to conduct surveillance. Uh, he did, <laughs> they did that in Poway on February 27, 1978. They had an M3 submachine gun, a high standard 22 pistol fitted with a silencer, ammo for both weapons, rubber gloves, camo clothing, a hand-drawn map to Morgan's home were found at Johnson's residence, and an electronic listening device with a parabolic microphone was in, found in Peter's residence after search warrants were issued. All right, Johnson's girlfriend, Linda Sue Osborne, was also charged in the case. Morgan, who had been assigned to investigate motorcycle gang activity in the area in 75, Retired from law enforcement and fled California with his family due to intelligent reports there was a $50,000 bounty on his head. Yeah, that would be a smart thing to do. It is believed that the San Diego Hells Angels obtained permission from the club's Oakland mother chapter to carry out the attempted assassination. I don't know about that. Of course they did. Right. (laughs) Four police officers were fired and another four were suspended as a result of a brawl between policemen and the Angels members outside the Hells Angels clubhouse in Oakland, 2nd of April, 1978. The fight began after two patrolmen began issuing citations for public drunkenness to the bikers who had gathered to attend a meeting and a birthday party. And 41 patrol cars later converged at the scene. Holy yeah. shit. Oakland police officers manning the command post during Hells Angels members' funeral came under fire from a drive-by shooting carried by a club associate who opened fire in frustration at their presence. He fired shots, then left before returning and firing again. No casualties reported. All right, I think we're going to wrap it up on the RICO case uh, investigation on these guys. Uh, 33 members and associates of the Hells Angels, Oakland, San Francisco, Marin County, San Jose, Los Angeles, and Vallejo chapters, including Oakland chapter president and reputed national leader Sonny Barger, were indicted on the RICO statutes June 13, 1979. Oh, shit. 21 of those arrested during the large-scale raids involved... Uh, Approximately 200 federal agents on the day of the indictment. Holy oh, shit. shit. Ultimately, 18 defendants did trial as a result of dismissals and other legal maneuvers, while others remained fugitive. oh, fugitives. Uh-oh. Prosecution, representing the federal government, attempted to, demonstrate, all right, attempted to demonstrate a pattern of behavior to convict Barger and other members of the Club of Racketeering Offenses related to guns and illegal drugs. 2nd of July, 1980, following an eight-month trial in which 194 witnesses testified. Guess what? 
mistrial, baby, when a jury failed to reach a verdict on the primary counts of racketeering conspiracy against the 18 defendants. How? They got they they had to gotten to. They gotten to. Well, on the remaining charges, which included drug possession and firearm offenses, six of the accused, who were Ronald Elledge, John Palomar, Alan Pizarro, Manuel Rubio, Donald Smith, and Bert Stephenson, were convicted while the remaining 12 were acquitted. Of course. Damn, Alan Pizarro, you got uh, acquitted from murder, but they're like, we're going to get you eventually. Right. August 12, 1980, the government returned a superseding RICO indictment, which admitted the allegation that the Hells Angels itself con- constituted a criminal enterprise against 14 defendants, including some of those in the original case. Really? Uh, and uh, those stood trial. Oh. In addition to the racketeering charge, a second count of the indictment charged James Brandis with the murder of fellow Hells Angel Ray Kefauver and the attempted murders of San, San Jose Police Department Sergeant John Crack. And yeah, we already know. They, these guys were already charged. Right, I know we're already talking shit. about that. Get the fuck out of here. Let's take a look at Operation Rough Rider. Members and associates of the Hells Angels Sacramento, San Diego, and San Francisco Bay Area were arrested and charged with racketeering and drug trafficking May 2nd, 1985, as part of Operation Rough Rider, which was a three-year FBI investigation into the club. Six were arrested, including San Francisco Chapter President Gary Kaltzman, and 40 firearms were confiscated in the Bay Area. That's it. Damn. The operation involved... It took three years. No, you got was 40 firearms? Right. Come on. The operation involved approximately 1,000 law enforcement personnel, resulted in the arrest of a total of 133 Hells Angels members. That's like... Uh, and associates. That's like $10 million worth right. of uh, people. That's it also had uh, about 50 raids in 11 states and the seizure of $2 million in cocaine, marijuana, meth, hashish, PCP, and LSD, as well as weapons, including Uzi submachine guns and rocket launchers. Ooh, some Uzis. Well, at least huh? they got $2 million in fucking drugs. Right. Much of the intelligence. Just gonna go over there, just going to sell it right back to some fucking drug dealers. Right. Much of the intelligence that led to the indictments was provided by Kevin Bonner, a undercover FBI agent who infiltrated the club for 26 months and made drug deals with various chapters. He purchased meth and cocaine from Kotzman on five occasions between 4th of June and November 6th, okay, 1982. Well, idiots. Right. Let's think about probably the biggest thing against these guys, which was Operation Caucus. Cacus. C-A-C-U-S. Caucus? Caucus? Cacus? Okay. Uh, November 10th, 1987, 13 Hells Angels, including Sonny Barger and his second-in-command, Michael O'Farrell, were arrested on drugs, weapons, explosives, and conspiracy charges. During 26 raids carried out by 250 ATF, FBI, California State Police personnel in the San Francisco Bay Area, which also resulted in the seizure of over 100 weapons, more than a million in cash and narcotics, and three meth labs. Ooh, now they're getting somewhere, right? right? Approximately a million in cash were discovered at the Oakland home of Kenneth Owen as well, a club member arrested for meth distribution. The raids were the culmination of Undercover Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force, which was called CACUS. Right. The operation in the Bay Area was executed no, it was in called the OCDTF Operation Cactus. Right. The operation in the Bay Area was executed in synchronization with raids on various other Hell's Angels chapters in four other states, producing a total of thirty-eight arrests, and concluded a two-year investigation of the club, which commenced in nineteen eighty-five after Anthony John Tate, the charge sergeant at arms in Anchorage. How much crime can you do in Anchorage? <laughs> a lot, man. Right. Uh, Sergeant Arms of the Anchorage chapter volunteered to become a paid FBI informant. Paid, too. He's like, I'm sick of these six months of light. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, I need darkness. <laughs> uh, travel in a country at government expense. Tate made documented purchases of weapons, explosives, drugs from the Hells Angels. He also covertly recorded club meetings by wearing a wire. <laughs> Owen was convicted of selling three pounds of meth to Tate. And was sentenced to 41 years in prison. Jeez. Holy shit. And a $2.1 million fine. Holy shit. Damn, we would never pay that. All right. Uh, that was in 88. Barger and O'Farrell were among 10 Hells Angels from California and Alaska extradited to Louisville, Kentucky to face trial for conspiring to transport firearms and explosives across state lines in order to kill members of the outlaws. Oh. Remember when they killed right. the, the yeah. John Cleve Webb guy? Wow. Well, Webb, he was the president of the Anchorage Hells Angels chapter who was shot and murdered by- His sister t- lived there or something. Right. Who was shot and murdered by two outlaws- Outlaw members outside a bar in Jefferson County, Kentucky. That happened on the 12th of August, 1986. Barger O'Farrell, convicted of conspiracy on 28th of October, 1988. They have to cancel the Halloween party. <laughs> Other members of the California oh, Alaska... Convicted? Did they go to jail right away? They maybe. Not, maybe. Other members of the California Alaska chapters were convicted on state drug and firearm charges, either side of the federal trial. Okay. O'Farrell shot and stabbed oh, to death by two men during a bar fight in San Leonardo. Leandro and San Leandro on the 6th of June in 1989 while awaiting sentencing. Damn. 
I'm surprised they didn't let him out. Barger, he served three and a half years of a four-year sentence at FCI Phoenix in Arizona and was released on the 6th of November, 1992. Good for him. Owen, he died on the 4th of July, 2016. It's only about the fourth time this has been said. Yeah. A million-dollar bounty was allegedly put on Tate's life by the Angels. Yeah, allegedly. And finally, we're going to end, we're really going to end it now with crackdowns on these sons of bitches. I mean, how much more crackdowns can you do? <laughs> no, yet. It's been 30 years of crackdowns. Uh, it's been 30 years. <laughs> April 29th, 2011, Ventura County Sheriff's Office Gang Unit Detectives raided the Ventura Hells Angels chapter during a club meeting, arresting five members on charges including being under the influence of meth, possession of marijuana, for sale, or possession of a deadly weapon. Oh. Among their arrested was George Christie. We'll get to this fucking guy. Who was the, or this is George Christie III, who was the son of the guy we'll fucking get to, which right. is George Christie Jr. Yes. The raid followed a three-week investigation into the theft of a gun safe from a home in Ojai. Ooh, that's some time there. 26 members and associates of the Hells Angels were arrested in federal drug charges and raids by SWAT teams of the FBI and the San Diego Police Department and the Oceanside Police Department. Like, I on this. Right. They did that in 19 locations across San Diego County on, 19, on the 29th of September in 2011. Additional six defendants already in custody as well as custody. An additional six defendants already in custody as well as four fugitives were named in an affidavit. Thousands of dollars in currency. Ten firearms and narcotics were also seized. The charges stem from a two-year investigation conducted by the FBI's Violent Crime Gang Task Force, which investigated meth trafficking and violent crimes committed by the San Diego Charter of the Hells Angels. So much money wasted on these people. Right. Hells Angel member Charles Nucci was arrested when the San Francisco Police Department Gang Task Force raided the headquarters of the Hells Angels in the Dog Patch neighborhood of San Francisco May 14, 2014, they were serving a warrant in connection with an aggravated assault in 2013, oh, in which several assailants wearing Hells Angels jackets allegedly attacked a victim in San Francisco. Every one of these guys are just savages. They don't even belong on the streets. Right. Wow. February 11, 2015, SWAT officers and Riverside County Sheriff's Department deputies raided the Hells Angels clubhouse on West 19th Street in San Bernardino, serving a gang-related warrant and arresting one member of the club. Shotgun confiscated, as it was a batch of a suspicious white powder. <laughs> Oh, I'm like, what's this? It's coke, <laughs> you dumb bitch. The raid was part of a larger operation, which overall resulted in multiple arrests and the recovery of 19 firearms, some narcotics, stolen property, and a motorcycle that was also stolen. Oh, shit. 17 warrants were served in re relation to the gang violence and unsolved violent crimes. Holy fuck. And others. Holy shit. Dude, this whole episode was just rapid fire murder. And assaults. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are just a threat to humanity. Dude, this is... Holy shit. You guys just listen to an hour and a half of this shit, and this is just California. Yeah, an hour and a half of freaking crime nonstop. Oh, my gosh. This is just California. Oh, my. We got the rest of the United States coming up next month, and that one's even longer. <laughs> this so. is insane. These guys are just some freaking... Man, some mongrels. Australia's bad. Canada's bad. United Kingdom's bad. Oh, you already know that. The rest of the world is bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll get to George Christie. He's a bad man. <laughs> He's a bad man. He's a bad man. Holy, Holy shit. shit. I mean, that's a lot to take These in. guys. Holy moly. Well, wow. we'll be uh, kicking it back to the old remastered series next week. Where oh, we, yes. uh <laughs> As well, I guess we're going to go to a lighter subject, which is Charles Black Bart Bowles. He might have only killed a couple people. <laughs> so. Oh, isn't that the guy who killed people with their snoring or something? No, that was, um, we'll get to him, but. Holy shit. That was uh, John Wesley Arden. Wow. It's a lot of stuff to unpack there. So uh, These guys are just morons. Just morons. Morons that just didn't give a fuck. Right. Holy shit. Drugs really got a hold of me, man. Right. Son I of really a wanna bitch. Let go. Yeah, well, that's being said. That's a long-ass episode. We're wrapping this shit up. Join us next week for uh, <laughs> Wild West looks tame compared to this. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll be doing a remastered episode of Charles Back Black Bart Bowles. Remember, go ch uh, check out our YouTube at Bang Dang Network. And if you are interested in our Dart League, we'll have the description for our new YouTube channel, just exclusive for the Dart. So give us a subscription there. If you listen on Spotify, Apple, give us a review. Share with your friends. Answer that Spotify question. We'll be back next week for some more Outlaws and Gunslingers. We are the Mother Music Industry. Bang Dang.